Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session on Databricks Fundamentals. And uh, today we have our speaker, Arun, who is a data engineer and a Microsoft certified trainer. And he'll be guiding us on the fundamentals that you need to know to get started with the Databricks. So he has been sharing uh, his knowledge in a lot of communities, and we are really happy to have him with us today. So before we uh, I pass on the mic to Harun, I wanted to share that this recording is this session is going to be recorded. And secondly, there is a certificate of participation for those who stay till the end. And I will share the form which you can fill out and get your certificate of participation. Um, and if you like the today's session or you are somebody who is wanting to learn more from these kind of experts joining in and uh, you can join our community where you will have uh, you know a lot of more sessions coming in and a lot of more free training which will be happening in the community that's it from my side and um, and i'm moving the mic to heron to get started with the session over to you thanks rak good morning and good afternoon everyone thanks for joining this uh, databricks fundamental session so i'm going to share my screen uh, from there we'll start Please let me know once you can able to see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen. Thanks. Sir. So once again, welcome everyone. So today we are going to uh, deep dive into the fundamentals of Databricks, means what is Databricks, why Databricks, and how to start with Databricks. Okay. So before starting, uh, myself, Harun Rashi, that's Surak said. Uh, I am a specialist data engineer with Hitachi Solutions. I'm having around uh, seven years of experience in data. Uh, means the entire ETL development and data engineering, cloud, all those things, okay? And uh, these are some of my achievements. I'm a MCT, that is Microsoft Certified Trainer, as well as a Databricks uh, Certified Data Engineer. Yeah, so uh, what is Databricks? So may I know how many of you from data background? in this group you can raise your hands like uh, okay only three fine so uh, basically uh, data bricks is a big data platform we can say it's a managed service so uh, all these days we were using Hadoop, Spark, all those things, right? Uh, so we need a managed service. That means uh, someone needs to manage all those things. So there comes Databricks. So Databricks is a company altogether, which uh, was uh, uh, invented or uh, what to say, like uh, developed by the Apache Spark developers only, okay? So Apache Spark developers, they developed this uh, uh, Databricks where they are providing a managed services of all the Spark. So that means you need to know Spark if you are going to work on Databricks because uh, Databricks is uh, uh, fully running on a Spark engine only. OK, so today we are going to see that only uh, what is Spark, the basics of Spark engine, then how to use Databricks. This is what uh, today's session is going to be. There is uh, uh, there is uh, not nothing going to be like a theoretical or the PPT is like that. Uh, most of the things I'm going to show you how to use Databricks, how you can start with Databricks. Okay, is that fine? I'm considering the silence as yes, and I'm proceeding further. Okay, so here you can see what is Databricks. It's a cloud-based platform for data engineering, data science, and analytics. That means it is offering all these uh, functionalities to you. You can do your uh, data engineering work, data analyst work, data scientist work, all those things, okay, in a single platform. That is the advantage of uh, going with uh, Databricks. And the key features of having Databricks is all these things. You can collaborate with your team and work. Okay, you can uh, scale your... Uh, uh, data pipelines and uh, it is secured because all the uh, security comes under a single hood. All those things are there. We are going to see uh, as a demo also. So these are just a theoretical part. 
so when you are going to do a data analytics okay so mostly uh, we use uh, data bricks for data engineering data analytics and then last it comes for data science okay so when i say data analytics that means uh, you are going to source the data and you are going to do the transformation and you are going to derive a valuable insight from it okay so valuable insight in the sense uh, you are going to do some reporting at the end so those reporting needs a transformation those transformation you are going to do with databricks notebooks so you, you can uh, write your code in python scala or or even sql also so databricks supports uh, these many languages so that also we are going to see in live okay so now without wasting time i'm going to uh, open databricks and show it to you how it uh, looks how many of you already worked on databricks can you please raise your hands am i audible sura am i audible ah uh, yes yeah uh, guys i actually want this session to be a kind of interactive session so that uh, we can uh, share our knowledge like uh, i will show you what is data breaks you can raise questions that kind of interaction would be good if it is anyway i'm yeah, going they to can share my drop your their questions in the chat messages, box they right? do not have the yeah. uh, mic Option access to unmute yourself. So, so, okay fine yeah great okay Okay, so let me know, uh, Sarag. Uh, you can able to see my screen, like uh, my Azure portal screen. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So Databricks uh, is like uh, now I am going to open Databricks from Azure, but uh, Databricks is a, a separate entity where you can uh, use it as a Azure Databricks or AWS Databricks or GCP Databricks. So basically, uh, Databricks need a compute. that means databricks is a platform that uh, offers you a spark engine managed uh, service but uh, it needs a compute that compute will be provided by any of the cloud provider that cloud provider can be a azure aws or gcp okay so now i am going with the azure because i am having a azure subscription with me so i can create a azure databricks and show it to you all but if you are if you have a aws subscription or gcp subscription you can create your notebooks with that particular cloud provider computing unit okay so that is the basic thing of uh, databricks you can collaborate with any of the cloud providers so if at all you don't have any of the subscription but you are willing to uh, try databricks there is a free subscription or free uh, portal available so that i will guide you at the end how to get into it so that it's free for lifetime you can go create your notebook run your codes test your codes okay all those things you can do with certain limitations because since it is a free they will not give you more computing units they will give you a very less basic computing units okay that is a single node that i will guide you at the end what we need to prepare uh, preparation in the sense uh, faizuddin uh, uh, what in what perspective you are asking for the certification you are asking so this training uh, this is basically into fundamentals of databricks okay so where i am just showing you what is databricks and how to you start with databricks and why databricks so post completion of this particular uh, webinar uh, you can start with uh, some advanced concepts like how to write a effective pyspark code all those things uh, you can start with i hope you got your answer okay so you can see there is a separate service called azure databricks here so uh, it's like uh, any other services in azure if you are already used in azure you might know these each and every individual thing is called a services or a resources now i am going to create a azure databricks resource so i'm going to create a new one the subscription information i'm giving resource group i am going to just create a new resource group so this resource group is a kind of a virtual container which hold all our resources just i'm giving a databricks test as a name and here i am going to give the workspace name our actual databricks workspace name 
I'm going to give it as uh, DB So here comes the pricing tier with uh, premium and standard. So when you go with the premium, you will get all the features like uh, the advanced features like Unity catalog and everything. If you go with the standard, you won't get that. So I'm going with the premium feature. But when you are going to use the community edition that I'm going to tell you at the end, you will not get the premium feature over there. OK, you will get only the basic uh, feature. These things I am giving all the default options. So now I'm just creating a resource. I am just creating a Databricks resource from Azure. OK, as I said earlier, you can create this resource from any of the cloud provider. It will take a couple of minutes to start. Meanwhile, I'm going to show you the Spark architecture because if you want to be a Databricks developer, you need to understand the Spark engine. Without understanding the Spark engine, you cannot uh, write an effective uh, PySpark or Scala code. OK, so let me share a PPT and explain you about the Spark engine. So Apache Spark, as I already said, it's a analytic engine. So we can say unified analytics engine for data processing that too for big data. OK, so whenever a big data comes into picture, we need some uh, framework to process it. You can process the big data using a SQL also, but it will take uh, more time to process it. OK, so in this uh, data era, I can say this is a data era, right? So you need to process your real time data or the streaming data immediately. So we don't have much time to process the data. We need to quickly process it, derive a valuable insight from it. Otherwise, there are a lot of competition in the market. OK, so for that quick processing, we need a good framework. That framework we can say Apache Spark is one of the good framework for processing the big data. So you can incorporate this uh, or integrate this Apache Spark with any of the sources. Like you can get the data from your uh, uh, Kafka and process it in Apache Spark or Cassandra database, MongoDB database. You can integrate Apache Spark with any of the sources. OK, so what actually will happen inside the Apache Spark is. So this is the basic uh, architecture. You can see there is something called driver process and executors. It's simple. For example, consider you are a team leader and uh, you are getting a project. So what you will do? You are having some uh, uh, subordinates for you, like uh, four to five team members you are having. You will split the project work into four tasks and give it to each and every individual. And once the team members completed their work, they will report it back to you. OK, so that work you will consolidate and you will report it back to the report it back to your uh, manager. So the similar kind of thing will happen in the Spark engine also. Whenever you are giving your data to the engine or whenever you are giving submitting your data to the Spark application, what it will do is this driver process will split the data and individually process it. And I can say parallelly process it. See, I am just explaining in a layman term. I am not going much technical because most of you are not from data background. So I am just giving in a layman term explanation. Okay. So basically, a big chunk of data, you are going to split it into smaller uh, chunks and uh, process it parallelly. Okay. So that parallel processing helps to complete the data processing in a quick manner. I hope you all can understand this. Any doubt in this? OK, so how it happens? So in the next slide I, I can explain you each and every machine. So you can see the driver and the executors or else you can say driver and workers. OK. OK, I will be repeating it again. For example, you are having a one terabyte of file and you want to do some transformation on the one terabyte of file transformation in the sense you want to join two columns and you want to calculate uh, some uh, uh, maximum of uh, salary of each and every group all those things you want to do so that at the end of the transformation you will have a valuable data to project it in your report either a power bi or a tableau report okay so that transformation you can do it in databricks so how the transformation will carry forward is using this driver and workers only because you are having a one terabyte of file. One terabyte of file, if you are going to process in a single machine, it is going to take around two to three hours. 
okay but if you split that one terabyte of file into five to six individual chunk of uh, smaller files and give it to multiple machines so now consider you split the one terabyte of file into four smaller files and four smaller files is going to get processed parallelly so each and every machine is a java virtual machine jvm so which will have some uh, memory and computation each and every file is processing parallelly now once the files get processed that means the transformation applied on the files it will report back to the driver node the driver node will give the results to the end user okay so this is how the data will get processed in the spark engine so but uh, if you want to go deeper you can see here do it on uh other azure product I, I will come on that okay i will come on that part uh, uh, someone raised a question can i do it on other azure product yeah i will say so if you go further deeper like uh, whenever you are submitting any application you can see here first it will create a job each and every job will create a stage each and every stage will create a multiple task okay so this is how in the back end it will work task is the individual uh, thing that is going to get processed on the worker node that means that executor each and every task will complete then it will report back to the driver okay so this is how it will be happening in the back end can i can it do on the other azure product that means you are asking whether the same uh, spark or the same big data can be uh, doable in any other azure product yes you you have a azure product called azure synapse there also the spark is supported you can able to write your spark codes there but uh, databricks is having some additional features like workflows you can uh, create a job you can create a task and uh, you can schedule it basically but uh, if you are going with the azure synapse you can create your notebook if you want to schedule it you need a azure data factory for it all the notebooks you need to schedule it from a data factory pipeline or synapse pipeline but when you go for a databricks everything comes under a single hood you create your notebook you schedule it you create a number of jobs all those things you can do that is the basic difference so i'm not going to take much time on this park architecture because uh, this is like a ocean so when you start you will be uh, going through a lot on this park architecture so i i will be sharing few links or i will uh, share it with surag he will be sharing it with you where i have covered uh, in depth the spark architecture uh, things you can go through that if you want okay so now uh, from a crossover task between all stages crossover task between two stages that means like no a crossover task that means uh, if one executor is free a task will be running on that particular executor okay so crossover task cannot be done each and every task will be running on a single executor nodes we can say slots a stage can have multiple task and multiple task will be running parallelly now i'm again going back to the data bricks portal where we created so this is the data bricks uh, service that we created i am just launching the workspace so in this workspace only we are going to create our data bricks notebook and uh, start writing our codes this is the databricks workspace or we can say databricks a home page so you can see uh, the workspace is there and uh, you have a catalog workflows compute will go one by one and it's still loading yeah so this is the databricks uh, workspace okay so if i click on the workspace option you can able to see workspace under this workspace only we are going to create our notebook okay i am going to create a notebook you can see multiple things are there like i can create a workflows 
i can create see i can create ml flow experiments i can create a library i can create a plain python file i can create a dashboard okay all those things are available but the fundamental thing is first we need to know how to create a notebook write the code with that code we can able to do all those things whether databricks and azure databricks are same so databricks is a managed service okay so you can create a databricks and get the computing unit from any of the cloud provider so now i am getting the computing unit from azure okay so i am calling it as azure databricks here you can see it is named as microsoft azure okay if i go to aws service aws cloud and create a databricks from there it will be a aws databricks gcp means it's a gcp databricks so databricks goes with any of the cloud providers it just need a computing unit from the cloud providers i hope you got it so what computing unit i'm saying is if i go to compute here basically we discussed right uh, whenever you are processing a data it needs a driver node and a worker node okay so that driver node and worker node is going to be provided by the cloud provider that means we have all features in azure databricks as well right yes we have all the features in azure databricks yes that means we have all the features in databricks that can be azure databricks that can be aws that can be a gcp since i am having a azure subscription now with me i am going with the azure databricks okay so compute coming to the compute part this is very important this compute part is very important because uh, here only you are going to create your uh, driver nodes and worker nodes whatever we discussed in the spark architecture okay so based on the driver node and worker node only your data is going to get processed okay so see here there are like all purpose compute job compute sql warehouse and pools okay this policies i'm i will come at and uh, i will explain at the end so first i will create a all purpose compute so here you can see the worker and the driver type okay so you can choose what worker configuration and driver machine configuration you want here i'm going with the least one that 14 gb and four cores so in this machine only our data is going to get processed workers and this is the driver node always there will be only one driver node and there can be zero to n number of worker nodes okay so this worker nodes you can have zero if the worker node is zero then we will call it as a single node cluster that means there will be only one driver node the driver node will itself act as a driver as well as a worker that is called as single node cluster but now this is a multi node cluster because i have a driver node as well as i have a worker node also okay you can see the worker node as having a minimum 2 and maximum 8 that means it is auto scaled enabled we enabled the auto scaling here if i disable the auto scaling there will be only one option for the worker i will tell you why this option is there for example now the auto scale is not enabled okay i am giving the worker as two that means there is only two machines available to process your data consider like you have only two machines available to process your data okay two machine one machine with 14 gb memory and four cores that means two machines with 14 gb and four cores individually if your data volume is going to be high that time it will wait for the availability of the machine because these two machines is now occupied once the slot get released the executor is free then only the next set of smaller file will go and get processed okay but if i enable the auto scaling and if i say 228 then if i process any smaller file it will occupy only two machine and will process my data and uh, if my data volume is going high it will take three machine four machine up to eight machine it will take in the run time i am saying okay when the process is running during the run time it will scale up and scale down automatically with this we will be saving the cost how we will be saving the cost because when the data volume is low it will consume only two machines okay gradually if the data volume increases it is going to consume more machines yes pricing differs you can see here i am saying 228 right 228 means uh, here the cost is going to be 4 to 14 data bricks units per hour here the costing is based on the dbu data bricks units per hour how many data bricks units you are going to use based on that you are going to get billed 
okay for example if i am going to increase this from uh, 10 to 100 you can see here it increased from 4 to 152 data bricks units per hour okay so this totally depends it also depends on what kind of driver and worker uh, machine that you are choosing okay now you can see 14 gb 4 cores is going to cost you 4 to 152 dbu if i change the worker node to a bigger one like 119 192 gb and 48 cores you can see the cost changes from 72 to 2424 databricks units per hour okay so this uh, this one it will be like uh, uh, trial and error or based on your process uh, based on your data we will be uh, creating our uh, worker nodes or choosing the proper uh, uh, workers okay the configuration let me i'm going with the least one as of now so this is a multi node cluster okay so this is called as all purpose cluster or a interactive cluster we can say that means during any development activity we will be creating our own cluster and uh, create our notebook attach this cluster to the notebook and we'll be start working how we will do i will explain you now before that i will give you the overview now you all clear with the compute all purpose compute right so now i will explain you about the other tabs in databricks so under this workspace only you are going to create your notebooks and write your code okay reasons will show you the reason notebooks that you opened so catalog is nothing but uh, you can see all your uh, table structure here so basically uh, what you are going to do is you are going to transform your data and load the data into a table so that table in databricks you can load it into a hive meta store table okay that hive meta store tables will be listed out here what are all the schema is available under the schema what are the tables that you are maintaining everything will be coming listing out here okay and workflows you can create your workflows i said right uh, uh, you can create your notebook and you can schedule that notebook for example you are going to transform a data uh, user information data and you want to run that notebook every day morning 9 am so no need to manually run it you can come here you can schedule create a job and schedule it for every day 9 am so every day at 9 am automatically that notebook will trigger and it will do the transformation and whatever you are uh, saying like loading into a file or loading into a table it will happen automatically there comes the workflow and compute we know here only we will be creating our clusters okay so this is the basic things you need to know and here comes the sql part so if you are a sql developer and you want to write your own sql code and from the sql code you want to create a dashboard live dashboard all those things you can do it here okay so for example i will show you if i click on sql editor here you can write your sql like codes okay you can write your sql like codes and you can run it and from the output you can able to create a dashboard as well see once the result is available you click on add to dashboard then uh, a kind of a visualization you can create okay you can uh, write and save your queries here like as a notebook you can save your queries also and whatever the dashboard that you created it will be listed out here you can create a alerts also for example if any threshold value crosses or uh, anything you want to create an alert in sql you can create an alert this is a history and to run this sql codes you need a warehouse to run the notebook you need a compute that is a cluster to run the sql things you need a warehouse that warehouse you can go and create it here okay and uh, this related to data engineering these are all some advanced concepts that is a delta live table so delta live table is for like a streaming data we can say and these are all for machine learnings you can create your models experiments all those things you can do it here okay so this is a basic overview very fundamental so i'm not going to cover in depth of all those things maybe in future sessions we'll cover all those now i'm going to check whether my cluster started or not there's some error okay there is some restriction it is not uh, allowing me to create a okay because i have chosen the south india as a region so that south india is not supporting me to deploy this particular uh, v5 d4 ads v5 uh, machine okay fine i will uh, show you the notebook
I am going to create a notebook now. So this is called as notebook where you can write your uh, codes and execute it. OK, so I will give you the worry of this uh, notebook uh, page as well. So here you can see the first thing you need to note uh, note down is this notebook should get attached to any of the cluster. OK, so I created a cluster, but it got term, uh, terminated due to uh, that uh, uh, region issue. So you, like this only you will be attaching your notebook. OK. So you create a cluster and you attach that uh, cluster to your notebook and start writing your code. OK, so you can create n number of cells. And uh, start writing your uh, Python that is a PySpark code. OK, for example, this notebook by default uh, I created as a Python language. OK, you can change the notebook level languages here. OK, see here Python. You can change the entire notebook to a SQL notebook. Or you can change the entire notebook to Scala or R. So as of now, I'm going with the Python. I can write my Python codes here or a PySpark codes here. But if you're thinking like I need to write some Python code, for example. In one cell, I need to write a Python in next cell. I need to write a SQL code that also possible in Databricks. For example, in this cell, if you want to write a SQL code, you can use a magic command called percentile SQL and start writing your SQL code. OK. Or else you can simply in this cell towards the right simply click on this and change the language. This will change the language only for this particular cell. If you select SQL automatically, it will put that magic command percentile SQL here and you can start writing your SQL code. If you have any table, you can give that a table here. OK, so that will uh, list out the means that will, that will display the table for you. So this is how the uh, you will be writing uh, uh, notebook with uh, multiple languages in a single notebook. OK, so this is how you will be creating your first notebook. Now I'm going to tell you how to uh, create a community edition for free so that you can use that community edition uh, uh, on your own. OK, I'm going to. Share this link. In the chat window community dot cloud dot databricks dot com. Because everyone will not have a Azure or AWS uh, subscription, right? Uh, so if you want to start, uh, you can uh, start with this uh, community edition. OK. So please sign up with that uh, URL and uh, you can see it is exactly similar to the Azure Databricks, but there is a community edition. So the only limitation you will be having in this community edition is if I go to the compute. See here only all purpose compute is there and job compute is there. If I click on create compute. You will not get much options here. You can see driver one driver node and zero worker node. So I said right uh, there can be zero worker node also that we will term it as single node cluster. OK, because since this is a uh, uh, free of cost, they will not give uh, more uh, computing unit to you. So I'm going to say test cluster. And I'm going to create this. You can see 15 GB memory, two cores. OK, this is the least one and they are giving only one driver node for us. So for practicing one driver node is more than enough because we'll be practicing with the smaller data sets only. So that is more than enough.
So I want the session to be like uh, give a, a basic overview about uh, directly into Databricks, uh, not like taking a theoretical part and uh, making you to understand deep dive of Spark architecture. I just want to uh, show you what is Databricks and how to use the Databricks so that later on you can go and uh, deep dive into uh, Spark architecture on your own. OK. Can you be able to show off basic KQL in Databricks? No, KQL, in the sense that Kusto query, uh, we can't uh, do, we can't write in Databricks. As of now, Databricks supports uh, Python, Scala, R, SQL. You can see my cluster is started now. You can see the cluster is running. I'm going to the workspace, creating a new notebook. And I'm going to name this notebook as Databricks Fundamental. And I'm attaching my, let me zoom a bit. I'm attaching my cluster to this notebook. So now I'm all set to start my coding, OK? So here, simply, I'm writing a Python code. It looks like a normal uh, uh, ID, right? Uh, Python ID. OK, like a Jupyter notebook it is, but it is having uh, additional features for big data processing because this is a Spark cluster. OK, so now you can uh, start reading your files uh, from uh, CSV or any other uh, format, any other sources, do the transformation. OK, then you load the data into a Hive Metastore table or uh, you save it as a file in cloud or on premises, whatever you want, you can do all those things you can do. Now consider this is your notebook with. Uh, let me show you one sample notebook which will have uh, some. Transformation codes. OK, you can see here I'm reading a file. I'm reading a CSV file. This is my CSV file and I'm reading it uh, using the spark dot read option. OK, so this is my data. I'm reading the file and storing it in a data frame and I'm just displaying the data frame and this is my data. So over this data, I can do the transformation. OK, over this data, I can do multiple transformations and then I can save that uh, file to a table or another file. See, these are all the transformations. You can add a column, you can rename a column or else you can do a calculation. See here we are selecting only few columns that we needed. And at last we are writing the file into a destination. So these are all the things we can do in Databricks. These are the very basic things I'm showing. So you can do a complex transformation in Databricks over the big data. OK. Then once you completed this notebook, so this notebook we have capgemini underscore demo. So if you want to run this notebook again and again, okay, that means every day 9 a.m. IST you want to run, then you can go here. You don't have the option for uh, computing, okay? If you go to the workflows, you will not get the option to schedule it. See, when I go to workflows in the community edition, it is saying that upgrade your database subscription because it's a free one, right? Now I will show it here. If I go to the workflows, this is Azure subscription, OK? I just want to show you the difference between the uh, the paid subscription as well as the free subscription. So whenever you are working on the community edition, you will know what are all the features that you will have, the, what are the limitations that you have. So here I can go and I can say create a job. And here I can create my jobs, OK? I'm going to say test notebook. The notebook that I created is here. And I'm going to create it. I 
as of now we just created a job i didn't uh, scheduled it okay so this is a manual run we can do or else if you want to schedule it you can see a schedule option here you can add a schedule here you can run it on daily basis hourly basis minutes month week whatever you want for example i'm going for a daily basis daily 10 40 the time zone you can choose okay so if i save this every day at 10 40 ist this particular notebook will get triggered okay so now whenever this notebook is triggering we need a computing unit that means we need a cluster okay this all-purpose compute cluster that we created here if it is going to be running 24 by 7 then you are going to pay a huge amount for it because every minute or every second the cluster is up and running you are going to pay for it that should not happen okay so for that purpose we have another cluster called job compute that means this job compute will start that means uh, will be up and running only during the job is running once the job completes or fails this job cluster will automatically get terminated okay but this all purpose compute cluster is not going to be like that it is like whenever you start it will be in start position and uh, whenever you are going to terminate that time only it will get terminated otherwise it will be keep on running you should not uh, run the all purpose compute 24 by 7 because it is going to cost you more there is a one option available there is a one option available in all purpose compute terminate after one, some minutes okay you can uh, define whatever uh, the time uh, period you want okay uh, that means if you're not going to run anything if you are not executing any code in the spark note sorry databricks notebook for more than 120 minutes this cluster will automatically terminate okay so this one you can keep it 10 minutes or 20 minutes or two hours or four hours whatever time that you want you can keep it so whenever you are working on any paid subscription make sure you are enabling this and giving a proper inactivity time here so that if you forget also forget to terminate also it will automatically terminate okay so that is all purpose compute and that is job compute okay so this job compute when it will be useful whenever you are creating a job for example this job that i created right when it asked for the cluster i said use a job cluster i didn't say use a all purpose all purpose compute cluster because if i say all use all purpose compute cluster tomorrow morning 10 40 am when it when it was about to start that time the all purpose compute should be started automatically it should be up and running okay so uh, to overcome that what i said use a job cluster so this job cluster will be started running along with this job once the job completes or fails this job cluster will terminate automatically okay so that is the advantage of job compute cluster does t sql supported by databricks to write a sql queries yes you can write a t sql when you are going with the sql editor okay when you are in SQL editor, you can write a T SQL code. But when you are in the notebook, there a slight syntax changes will be there. Okay, slight syntax changes will be there, but it is more or less similar to T SQL only. Okay. So now uh, I, I hope you all are clear with uh, the basic uh, cluster configurations. So you need to know what is all-purpose cluster and what is job compute and you need to know when to use all-purpose and when to use job compute you are clear with all-purpose and job compute if you are clear can you please raise your hand if you're not clear uh, you can say no in the chat i can explain it again Thanks. Okay. So next comes uh, the pools. Okay. So whenever uh, you are creating all-purpose compute or the job compute, uh, what will happen is uh, it will go to Azure and Azure or any other cloud provider, and it will request the uh, computing unit. That means it will request the uh, machines the whatever the configuration that you are requesting uh, that machines it will request and it will come back so that will take some time 
some time in the sense uh, to start the cluster it will take uh, two minutes five minutes i have seen five to seven minutes also okay sometimes 10 minutes also because it needs to go to the azure subscription and gets the computing unit for you and come back and give assign it to your data bricks so to overcome that uh, cluster starting time what you can do is you can create a pool okay you can create an instance pool this pool will occupy some virtual machine on your databricks of databricks workspace okay it will occupy preoccupy some databricks sorry preoccupy some virtual machine in your databricks workspace so whenever you are requesting a cluster first it will take it from the pool that you preoccupied okay then if it exits then only it will go and take it from the azure subscription this is basically for overcoming the cluster start time okay because cluster start time itself is going to take uh, five to seven minutes but uh, your uh, data processing time is just two minutes then uh, that is not going to help you right because uh, your data needs to get processed immediately the cluster itself is taking more than five minutes means uh, it is not a uh, uh, fast processing so you can create a pool and uh, you can get the resources from your own pool okay so that is the concept of pools here but no need to worry about pools much you can worry about all purpose compute and job compute later on when you are going to implement in production or if you want a faster cluster start time that time you can go and create your pools okay and SQL warehouse, as we discussed already, whenever you are going with this, uh, you are a SQL developer and you want to write your SQL codes and create a visualization, you go and uh, start this uh, warehouse. So basically, they, they, they are giving the default one as a size small. You can create a SQL warehouse with uh, multiple cluster configuration sizes based on the cost. If you are going to create a Forex large, the Databricks unit is going to be high. That means it is going to be fast, OK? So it totally depends on the cost. So that is how you will be using the basics of Databricks. Okay. So if you want to write a code, you need to learn PySpark. That means you need to know Python. And uh, with Python, you can able to write uh, effective PySpark codes. I will show you the basic PySpark codes that are uh, used for uh, reading a file, writing a file, and doing uh, some basic uh, transformation here. So this is the code used for reading a CSV file. Okay, spark.read is used for reading any of the file or table. Okay, spark.read is used for reading any file or table. And here I'm going to read a CSV file. So I'm saying CSV and I'm giving the path of the CSV file. And I'm going to read the file with the header. The first line I need to consider as a header. So I'm giving the option as header true and i am having my own schema for the file that schema i created a schema that means what is the column name and what is the data type of the column all those things i have created on my own and i am using that to read my file this is the code it's very simple like when you uh, when you know what exactly i need to use for reading a file and uh, what exact format i am reading and uh, with which option i am going to read if you combine everything, you can easily read your file with a proper configuration. Once you read the file, you are going to assign it to a variable. This is simply like assigning it to a variable, right? But here, this is a data frame because this is not a single value. This is a data. Whenever you're assigning a data to any of the variable like this, you can call it as a data frame. OK, so that data frame data is this. If you want to display or if you want to view what is the content of the data frame, you can say display in Databricks. OK. And this is the command for joining. For example, you are having two tables in SQL. How you will be joining? You will be joining like select uh, star from table one, inner join table two on condition you will give, right? Similarly, here also you are joining two data frames, data frame one that is df and the another data frame is called df1 so i'm joining data frame dot join df1 these two data frames i'm joining on the condition of this this is the on condition df dot app is equal to is equals to df1 dot app 
because in both the tables app is the key okay then what kind of join i'm going to do now i want to do a left join so i'm saying how is equals to left okay then i want to select only few columns after the join because whenever you do a join i will be getting two app right because both the tables having a same name so but i don't want two app i want only few columns from the df1 table so i'm using the select statement similar to sql if you know sql if you know the logic then it is very easy for you to uh, think about the logic and convert it into a pyspark code okay so this is a basic command for joining two tables and selecting few columns from the table and this is the command for this is the pyspark code for doing a group by so group by in the sense you want to group by a particular uh, value and uh, do some aggregation over that particular group right for example here i am grouping by the app and i'm calculate the average rating each and every application how much rating it got so this is the application for example you can see coloring book coloring book mona is having multiple entries and it is having different ratings 3.9 3.9 and 3.8 everything like that right so i want to calculate the average rating of this particular application coloring book mona so what i did i am saying data frame dot new dot group by on app column and i want to calculate the average of the rating so it is going to give me the average rating of each and every application and you can also create a functions python functions or pyspark function and you can reuse the code okay all these are like uh, pyspark commands you can implement it here maybe if you are uh, really interested in learning uh, in depth the pyspark code because now you know what is databricks why databricks how to use databricks with cluster everything right uh, so if you are interested you can drop message in this chat window or you can reach out to surag also or you can reach out to me we can organize a uh, in depth uh, pyspark coding session so that you can learn uh, how to start with the basic pyspark and uh, write your effective pyspark code for all your uh, data transformation so if you want to uh, let me share my screen once again uh, the ppt so uh, there is a community from databricks side itself okay you can join uh, the community that uh, surak shared and this is a community from databricks okay so you can join this community and you can raise your questions from this community you will get to know what are the latest features latest trainings are available directly from databricks this things also you can uh, uh, get use of it like uh, you can go to this uh, url and uh, sign up yourself or you can simply scan this barcode okay so this will help you if you want to uh, learn in depth databricks sql to databricks to assist data and information easily uh, sorry atal grace uh, sql to databricks to assist data and information easily that means i couldn't able to uh, get you can you please elaborate your question class of pyspark code syntax very similar syntax not very similar to pandas because uh, here uh, uh, yeah uh, not very similar a few things will be changing like uh, when you are doing the complex transformations the uh, things will be changing but the logic will be similar but pandas is not for uh, big data that means uh, it's not for a spark but here pyspark is for uh, spark engine that's the basic difference if you know pandas you can easily write your pyspark code if you know python you can easily write it any other questions okay if you don't have any questions so this is my linkedin profile you can connect with me if you want to know more about uh, big data and uh, data bricks and microsoft azure i'll be sharing blogs and uh, uh, contents related to data bricks and uh, azure related thing
Yeah, I got some questions. Do you have a reference books to learn PySpark? Our uh, reference books. Yes, uh, I have. Actually, you can uh, uh, refer uh, Databricks uh, official site itself. Uh, that means Spark official site itself. There you will get uh, uh, the entire uh, PySpark learning material. So uh, like uh, I, I have shared that uh, community edition link. Uh, everyone, please go ahead and uh, create your uh, community edition subscription in that there will be three options uh, like they will ask you to connect with the cloud. OK, don't click on any of the cloud option over there. If you scroll down, there will be an option to I don't have a cloud connect with community edition like that option will be there. OK, go with that community edition option. Don't click on cloud. If you click on any of the cloud, it will give you a trial period like a 30 days, something like that it will give. Don't go with that. Please click on community edition so you will be getting it free for lifetime. Yeah, everyone, please claim your certificates for this online webinar. Surag has a transfer. Uh, for the graduating student, uh, you can start with uh, Azure Fundamentals. OK, that is uh, A is at 900. Then you can go for uh, Databricks certification. OK, because uh, Databricks immediately uh, without uh, Azure Fundamentals or without any cloud fundamentals, if you go for Databricks, that is also fine. But if you learn what is the uh, cloud fundamentals uh, and what is the data fundamentals, then if you go, it will be very good. So I would recommend to start with the A is at 900. That is a Azure fundamentals. Then you can do a DP 900. That is a data fundamentals. Then you can start with any of the Databricks certifications. If you need any further assistance on this uh, thing, you can reach out to me in my LinkedIn. I will assist you. I hope I have shared uh, some uh, some of my uh, knowledge that I have on the fundamentals of Databricks. OK, uh, since the, this is a mixed audience, I don't want to deep dive into in depth of Databricks, so I have covered only the fundamentals. So based on the interest of this uh, group, uh, we'll try to have a in depth PySpark or in depth Databricks session in future. And I'll be organizing multiple sessions uh, online and offline. If you people are in Chennai, we have a big event coming up on November 17th and 18th. That is a Azure conference, multi cloud conference. So if you are really willing to join that, let me know. I can uh, give you some community passes that I have. So you can reach out through me on LinkedIn. That is an in person event. Yes, there is a recording available. I think after this session, uh, Surag will be uploading it in YouTube. You can refer that. OK, it looks like we are done for the session. I don't see any technical questions so far. If that's the case, uh, then we can wind up the today's session. It was a really great session. I think we went over a lot of fundamental thing. I hope uh, you know you were able to understand it. I think there is a lot of people who are not really related to data today. And uh, please do check out the fundamentals properly. And if you do not know the Azure, Azure basics, as Harun said, go for it's a 900. And I have shared some of the Azure related uh, Databricks content as well. And um, I will include the fundamental things whenever that we follow up with the session. And uh, yeah, I hope you have already uh, got a certificate of participation. And thank you, Harun, for joining us today and spending you know, your one hour of time and, and sharing your knowledge. It was great having you with us. And um, thank you, everyone, for joining with us today. And I hope you gained something new or learned something new um, joining with us today. Um, thank you, everyone. With that, we'll be winding up session and um, see you in another session, which we'll have it on 
18th of this month um more on uh, azure topics okay thank you everyone and um, with that i will be stopping the recording